Hey, how's it going? It's Carl Tashian, and I'm here with Patrick Ewing. Hello. At Hoverbird. That's me. Uh, and so what are we doing today, Patrick? So we're going to do a little pair programming in Unity exercise. Um, I would say I'm an inter- intermediate uh, Unity programmer, uh, and, I, uh, and I know Carl is interested in trying it out yeah i've never done anything in unity before so so um yeah we're going to do our own version of the like common entry point uh tutorial to unity which is uh basically constructing a little game where you control a little marble a little ball as it navigates a level and picks up coins and hopefully it doesn't fall off the level cool yeah i'm excited and uh so i'll just uh the the environment we'll be coding in is C sharp, which is the language of choice for Unity programmers. Um, but a lot of it won't be um, traditional coding. It'll be sort of like setting up a series of game objects. All right. Yeah. Great. Let's get started. Cool. So we, our, uh, we had some hot chocolate before. So oh, I think so we're, delicious. Uh, I think we're all. I'm feeling good. What should we? Uh, what should we call this? Um. Let's see. Is it a, what? What is the ball? That's the question. That's a, up to your imagination it, as a game developer. A, I think it's a pool. It's a pool um, cue ball. Okay, cool. We could call it Q. Q craziness. Nice. No related to marble madness. That's how you spell cue ball, isn't it? Yep. Okay, great. Okay, and this is a 3D package. Uh, I'm turning off Unity Analytics, and uh, we're just gonna create it there. All right, so we're gonna. I'm gonna maximize this. Um, Whoa, this looks like Windows. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely. <laughs> what's funny is Unity actually started as a as a uh, Mac project, but now it's Mac, Windows, Linux, Android, and iOS, all that good stuff. So uh, this is the basic Unity scene view. Uh, there's the game hierarchy or the scene hierarchy on the left. Um, it gives you two things to start because you need them for most everything: a uh, camera and a directional light, which is basically like a uh, omnipresent light that casts, casts rays in, uh, all dire- you know, in one direction, but in all places equally. Okay. Um, so these are called game objects. And um, on the right, you can see the inspector, which shows you the configuration of these game objects. Wow. Um, yeah, and each of these uh, little square boxes is called a component. And so you can see the directional light has two a transform and a light component. And the main camera also has a transform. And then it also has a camera and some other components. So transform is the primary uh, component for the position and rotation of each object in the world. Okay. Cool. Uh, so the first thing we're going to want to do is create a plane. So that's going to be what, you know, basically keeps our ball from rolling off the ground. So why don't you um, go up to the game object menu and um, create a 3D object and grab a plane there, yeah. All right. Cool. This is our playing field. That's our playing field, exactly. Um, And so we can grab these handles to adjust the plane. And um, you'll notice that this is really just changing the Y value on the transform. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I can also just type in those numbers there. Cool. Uh, and then because we are making a cue ball, um, you're going to want to grab another, make another game object to be our ball. Right. So, a sphere. Yep. All right. Boom. Um, so why don't you give that a name in the inspector? Okay. We'll call it uh, Q. Sounds good. Oops. Cool. Um, oh, wait. I renamed it, but then it did actually. Oh, yeah. You actually have to press enter. It's oh, like, okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, one thing I like to do with this is I, I like to reset its coordinates to the like origin of the world. So okay. zero, 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 put that there. And then I will, um, select the plane and make sure it's underneath. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's save this scene just before we go any further. Right now we're in an untitled scene. Okay. Um, so I'm going to create, this is something I, I recommend doing in all new unity projects is create a folder for all your scenes uh and then let's save it in there uh we'll just call it game 
because I think I think this entire game is going to take place in one scene. Yeah. Um, which is actually a pretty common Unity pattern. It is, seems. Yeah. yeah. Especially in VR, right? Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can then you can you can there's various tricks and hacks and systems for loading other scenes into the main scene. But for instance, Firewatch, a game I worked on, like the entire game took place in a scene we, that was called Teen Loop Dot Unity. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so a pretty big scene. Uh, it was. It was. I mean, it depends on how you define big. It was mostly <laughs> empty, but it was low. It was what we used to load various things into it. So in a sense, yes, it was a scene that spatially was as big as the entire game. Okay. But it was mostly empty except for triggers that you would walk into spatially okay. to pull in. I see. So you scene. cross certain thresholds and it loads in parts of the world for exactly. you. Exactly. I see. Exactly. Okay. And uh, so that's and that's now built into Unity in a, in a in a way that was not built in when we moved the game. So um, the other thing I'm doing here is I'll just teach you some quick mouse sh- shortcuts just so you can move around. So um, when I left click, I'm selecting objects. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I right click and hold it, I'm in uh, an eye view. So I can actually like rotate the scene view. This mm-hmm. is not the camera. This is just the scene view. And then I can WASD, W-A-S-D, to okay. fly around while, while I'm holding this out. So yeah, if you want to give that a try. Okay. And um, I see. Oh, nice. And you have to hold. Um, wait, do I have to hold the right button? Or... How do I do the WASD? Thing? Oh, you have to hold hold right right click. Yeah. Uh, it might be harder on your trackpad. I'm oh yeah, sure. I think it is. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. But yeah, and feel free to grab the mouse at any time. Um, um, cool. And now uh, I want to. I think this world is too small for a game this big. So I'm just going to go up to the scale panel and just. Um, so I could either for this I could just either type the numbers there or I can choose this scale mm-hmm. tool here okay. and um, scale it up. So uh, you'll also notice, um, you know, this is just a kind of nice thing about Unity is it's already taking care of casting a sh- realistic shadow based on where light. the light is. Exactly. Huh? And if I change the uh, orientation of the of the light, we would see all of these things update. You know, uh, I mean, right now it's like the light is actually coming from underneath the plane. So this is one of the nice things about Unity is it gives you physics and lighting like basically from square one. Um, Okay, so uh, this is our uh, cue ball, um, and we want to add some player behavior to it. We want to um, make sure that it's uh, that it's controllable, basically. So the way that you add behavior to game objects is with components. So why don't we? Um, uh, so why don't you select that ball okay. and then go to add component. All right, add component. Uh, and let's call this, um, so, okay, so go to script, new script. New script, yep. okay. And uh, then we're going to be actually naming our C-sharp file here. So oh, I see. let's okay. call this the player controller. Cool. All right, great. Yep. Great, man. So that uh, sets up a basic script, which should be uh, in our assets folder now. Okay. Um, oh, here I usually like to create a scripts folder as well. So just do that. It's to be nice and toity. Um, cool. And so we can edit that. You can edit it anywhere. Um, Mono develop is probably the best IDE on Mac. Um, people use Vid- Visual Studio on Windows. Okay. Uh, but you know, the only nice thing it has is it, it's got like some tab completion and the ability to jump, jump around different classes, etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is, this is set up an empty behavior for, uh, or sorry, I should say component, um, components inherit from mono, the class mono de- behavior, which is a C sharp concept of essentially like a mix in. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. so, uh, if we tab back over to our queue, what's what's basically happened is it's created this file, this empty class with two methods, start and update, uh, and then it's it's added it to this uh, object. But um, you can add any behavior, anything that that inherits from mono behavior is a component to Unity. That's the that's what they call mono behavior. Okay. So this component can be added to other objects. Like if I wanted the plane to have it, I just drag and drop it on. I and see. now it's 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 there. And um, 
but we don't actually want that. We are, we only want this one. So if we wanted like multiple cue balls that all kind of move in concert with the commands of the player, we could just associate all those with the behavior. Absolutely. The yep. Cool. Yep. Uh, so then each uh, behavior, each component has like, there's a series of like life cycle hooks that you can look up that all behaviors will have called. So the two most important ones are start and update. Start gets called when the game starts. So basically when the player hits play here, um, start runs. Uh, what we're seeing now, by the way, is just, it's literally what this what the camera sees and that's it right right um, this is the game though this, this is, is the game it. yeah we have a working game which is nice right. we, we can check the ch console no errors we're, we're good yeah <laughs> it could get a little more interesting <laughs> let's see um so but there's a few things i think that are missing here um like if this uh well uh, there's another actually i should say one more thing that's interesting like what do you expect to happen if i raise the ball above the plane and press play It'll fall. It actually doesn't fall wow. because it's missing a core, uh, a core component that we'll actually want to add here. So um, basic, the bare uh, minimum stuff that came when we opened this up, when we, sorry, when we created this object is we got the uh, mesh filter, which is basically what gives it its geometry. It's okay. what gives it this mesh, mesh triangles. And then it gave it a collider, which basically means nothing uh, nothing else with a collider can pass through this object. Okay. But that's it. So it's missing any sort of physics. Yep. So go to add component, and you should just be able to type search in the field, and then it's a rigid body. Okay. Uh, yep, so add that. And now uh, press play. Let's see. Cool. Boom. So basically oh, it really landed with a thud. It really did. Yeah. Um, not super interesting, but this is the, this is the basic physics model that um, unity ships with it's rigid body physics. This would be opposed to like um, sort of ragdoll physics is another one okay. that you see where like it behaves like an object with, a, you know, like a body with skeleton, et cetera. Rigid body is much computationally uh, simpler. simpler. And I can also, this can have rigid body, meaning it's like it has mass, et cetera. But if I was making a game where this is an asteroid, I might uncheck gravity yep. uh, there. And then, and then obviously it's going to stay. Yep. But so we're, we are having this to be a ball. So now it's got a rigid body. Um, cool. So now we need to accept player input. Um, the, where we're going to do that is go back to the component. And uh, so, oh, I, I was explaining these methods. Um, we've got start, which is called when the game, when play is pressed, mm -hmm. and update, which is called every single frame of the game. So right. this is where you actually, you really have to be careful about what you do here. Yeah. Because um, it's, you know, ideally you want 60 frames a second uh, or more in mm -hmm. a video game. And this is this update method is going to be called on every single object that one of these behaviors is on. Okay. So it's a hot spot. Uh, okay. So basically what we want to do here is grab the input from the player's keyboard. And then we want to use that to change the transform the position of this object. So, okay. Uh, first we have to get that, uh, that, Rig, uh, the transform we need to, th this object needs to know its own um position in the okay. world um so the way we do that is we actually get that rigid body component so this is a, a pretty common pattern uh in startup oops sorry i'm not used to some of these completions um let's call this rigid body and this is just me getting a reference to the uh, rigid body component that we just added. Okay. So this is C sharp syntax, um, which is type safe. And I'm saying, uh, I'm calling the get component method, um, with type rigid body. So okay. this is going to grab a reference to, uh, the rigid body that we just added. Um, I need to bump the, I need to declare this variable, uh, outside of the yep. scope. Right of this method so that I can use it across uh, other methods. So we'll make this a private um, variable because we don't need it outside of this component. Uh, rigid body. And 
I, tell me if you hate these names because I'm I'm still actually adjusting to a lot of C sharp naming conventions and I'm not yeah, crazy I, I, about them. This seems fine to me. Okay, cool. Um, so now we've got it. Do you need the space between um, in here? So that is, as far as I can tell, C sharp's most com- that is a common C sharp oh, yeah. um, convention. Yeah. I hate it. It looks so wrong to my eye. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's actually so. Wow. It's um the this editor is actually enforcing it for me. So okay. yeah. Um, I'm still like resisting it somewhat in my own mm-hmm. code, but anyway, mm-hmm. um, if anyone who's watching this knows why, where that came from, I'd love to know. Um, cool. So then basically now we're just going to get the, uh, the goal is to take the rigid body and, uh, push it in that, in the direction of the player's input. So we okay. can start from either direction. We can either start from the push or we could start getting the input first. Right. And are we giving it um are we are we giving it uh acceleration as long as the key is down or are we like giving it velocity? So this or something. we're giving it we're giving it velocity. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're we're so actually well, this is the method we're going to end up using, okay? Um we're going to uh we're going to use a method called add force. Uh, which takes a vector or what's uh, vector three, which is in unity terms re- represents a uh, 3d uh, vector. So like it would, that basically means two points in space, which from which you can derive like velocity. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um, so this is going to take uh, a movement uh uh, right, so, vector and one of the points will be the center of the rigid body always uh that- add so when add force basically when you give the vector to add force it's going to like uh for lack of a better term it's like going to change the rigid body rigid, rigid body physics to apply a force that has a direction and a speed um, okay so but yeah okay. And the yeah. dire- and so that's just the direction and the length of the vector would be the direction and the speed that it's applying. Yeah. The, so basically, we're going to the dire- Yeah. The the vector will be from the player input. The speed will will be fixed to begin with. So okay, great. we'll just like set up. Um, okay. A public variable speed. Um, this will just be a float. Um, and so this means we can change it um, out from outside of the of this class outside of this object. So mm-hmm. if we did want to right. have a, yeah, if we don't have a world where like, maybe you could hit a, hit a square and speed up, for instance, okay. making this, declaring this publicly means yeah. like the speed could be changed from without of the Great. class. Um, okay. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, then we need two more floats, which is to get the horizontal and vertical axis of the player input. Okay. So um, why don't you set this up? So it's just declare the type as float. And we'll Oops. call call it so it'll be float move horizontal, and then assign that to uh, c- capital input. So this is a built-in Unity class oh, dot okay. get access. It's the top one. Get access, Oops. yeah. Uh, and so one thing that's nice for folks who knew this editor is it's oh, actually yeah. telling us exactly what we need, which okay. I find very very helpful for learning a new yeah, system. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So um, so I can just say like. Uh, it's actually it's a, it's a string and it's called horizontal capitalized. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry, just a cap uh, uppercase, n- not all caps, not shouty caps. Oh, okay. It is a string though. Yeah. All right. Um, and then the same wow, for vertical. Syntax. Okay. Uh, I also think you want double quotes there. Okay. Yeah, I actually for I only use double quotes in Unity. I, okay. I forget what the significance and of I single quoting this is. is. Gonna be... Yep. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Now. Oh wow. Okay. So, am I doing a space or not a space here? Um, up to you. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, for sometimes some matters, reason, this is the. Oh, it okay. actually it never matters. Um, they're both. Okay. Uh, for some for some reason, the editor is sometimes uh, changing it. Yeah. Which obviously you could configure. Yep. I have no idea why this is the style here. Have you literally okay. seen this in any other I've environment? No, I've never seen this. Java, Ruby, this C. Is, like nobody ridiculous. does this. Yeah. It's very strange. Um. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I see it in a lot of C sharp code bases. Anyway, um, so now we're going to take those those directions, and that's where we're going to create um, 
a vector out of them. So that's combining the... Uh, so you'll see there's other vector classes, yep. and these are similarly like just um, n space. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you could have a 4, 4D vector, which is kind of interesting to think about for your game. Or if you were making a 2D platformer, you'd be using a lot more vector 2s and vector 3s. Um, we'll call this movement. And this is... Uh, Do you need that equals there, vector 3? Oh, sorry. I, That's the type, I need right? to not have that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't looking at the screen. Um, and this uh, takes three um, uh, floats, which represent okay. the X, Y, Z coordinates. Okay. So we'll, uh, horizontal comes first. Um, we're currently, this is like a, oh, this ball sort of sticks to the ground. So we don't need a Y coordinate. Yep. Um, and then vertical will be Z. Um, I have found that there's kind of a mix of paradigms here about like is why, uh, you know, uh, it basically why, when is Z uh, what we think of as up and when is Y right? Up. Most of the time with Unity transforms, Y is considered to be up. Okay. Okay. Um, cool. And then so all that the force is going to be is the vector. So if, I see. Yeah. So for people watching, just think of this as a like a line in space showing a, a 3d direction yep. uh, times the speed. So you can, uh, I see. yeah, you can multiply vectors yep. and right. Um, so that's that. So the input get access uh, horizontal, that's going to in the input world, going to get some keyboard input that either is default for Unity or is it defined somewhere else? Right. There's very, I believe that this is an abstraction. I don't actually use because in real game programming, you have to be more careful. Like, is this an Xbox controller or a mouse or a touch oh, I input? See. I think this is an abstraction that tries to do the best thing it can guess regardless of the input. Okay. So actually, we'll, we'll find out. I've never done, I've actually never used it um, cool. like this. Um, so just to, yeah, as a quick refresher update gets called every frame we will constantly be looking for horizontal and vertical input from the player we'll be making a new vector and then we'll be adding that force to the rigid body component which controls the physics of this object so Great. let's see if it works why don't you hit play all right let's do it um now let's just see if uh arrow keys, arrow maybe. keys wasdy Will I know that it's moving? <laughs> you should know. Although, yeah, it's actually tough, but because the camera is fixed, we should we oh, yeah. should see That's it right. moving. So, yeah, now I'm just gonna have to Google uh, input <laughs> and be like, what kind of input were you actually intending? Yeah. Um, cause or is clearly, it something we have to set up somewhere else? Like, uh, I think this is all we should need. I mean, barring my misunderstanding of uh, of input. Um, all right. So let's just see. Oh, we didn't try the mouse, did we? That's the one other thing I might try. No, nope, no mouse. Okay. Hmm. All right. Okay, so I've got the uh, input docs here for people playing at home. This is input.getaccess in the Unity documentation page. Um, so input get access returns the value of the virtual access defined, identified by access name. The value will range uh, will be in the range of negative one to one for keyboard and joystick input. If the axis is set to be the delta mouse movement, the mouse delta is da 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 da. Okay. Um, it's still not suggesting which kind of. I'm curious if maybe we just misspelled the names, but no, those look accurate. Yeah, I see mouse X and Y also. I mean, we could try. We, we could, could try, try that, that um, just to That'd debug. Kind of fun. Yeah. Mouse Y. Huh, still nothing. Um, so what I've normally check here is our player controller is here. Oh, there's your problem. Ah, our, our constant. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So... Uh, there we go. There we go. Beautiful. So the fun thing that uh, this actually demonstrates is I'm actually able to change this at runtime right That's from the editor. Really cool. Yeah. So now I've just added more speed. And if I click, I'm pushing our ball faster. And I could then set this to an insane amount and really... Pew, yeah, it's gone. Flick it right off the table. Um, and now it's just falling into the abyss right. somewhere. So this is an important thing to note. 
uh, when you're in play mode, which we are here, all of our code is running live. We can see that the ball is actually still moving. Oh, yeah. Um, it's falling it, fast. Right. And it also, <laughs> when we, so we can pause, which is fun, and then we can actually find, we can go back to the scene mode. We can actually find the ball. You can go back so to the scene mode. So it's so far away, we can't even see our plane. Okay. Um, we're very, very, very far away. Um, and then, so there's a couple fun things like that are kind of matrixy here. I can actually move this. I can actually go back to our plane. I just double clicked on that. Um, and here's a really handy tool. Let's say I just screwed up uh, in play mode. I can grab, I can uh, highlight the cue ball here in the hierarchy view. And then I can do uh, game object move to view. So oh, that nice. moves it back. Um, okay. Thereabouts. It's you always have to move around in. Uh, <laughs> you can never really know where something is until you like <laughs> scoot around. And yep. you know, this is why in the future all game development will be done in a VR headset. I'm ah, not, not okay. kidding because it's like really really hard to get this where I wanted to go. But anyway, my point is that this object is totally dynamic, and if I were to un, I want to get it just like really close to the camera, uh, just so we can see it again. Uh, oh, I, you know what I can do? I can just uh, get it back to zero. zero there we zero. go. Cool. So um, the ball is back. And if I go to unpause, um, it should be there. Uh, maybe it wasn't before. Anyway, the, my, the, the lesson here is you can constantly mess with a lot of things at runtime. Yep. And um, That's great. then if you, un, if you not pause, but uncheck play, the uh, any variables or state I changed in play mode is reset. So I that's see. a blessing and a curse. Um, the nice thing is you can play around with this stuff without worrying about messing up your like careful configuration. The bad part is sometimes you'll get obsessed with tweaking things really nicely and then you'll remember you were in play mode. So right. highly recommend you go to preferences um, and change your uh, play, set a play mode tint. And this just means... Um, Oh, that's great. When you're, whenever you're in play mode, it will tint the UI just so you uh, are. That's a oh, little that's intense. Uh, I would probably tone it down, but yeah, that'll yeah. that'll help us. Cool. So um, yeah, so this shows you a, another one little wrinkle is that um, anything declared public that is of a certain set of uh, types, but I think it's it's most types that you work with. If if it's a public variable in a mono behavior, it's actually exposed in the interface. Here. I like that. Yeah, it's really nice. It encourages you to play with it. Mm -hmm. um, and then if I were to set this to this and then press save, this would actually be the um, the value. Nice. So so this and that that d is depends on a per component basis. So okay. I could set a default here, which isn't a bad idea, but this is it's actually going to override that. Exactly. Great. And if I right, and if I add that same script to another object, then It'll, the yeah. speed will be a per it's on a per object basis. Cool. Cool. Um, so should we go back to horizontal and vertical on the... Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Cool. And that should let us take keyboard input. Yeah. Which I think will be fun. Totally. Let's give it a go. Great. Okay, let's see. <laughs> it's so horrendous. Oh yeah, yep. I'm using my uh, I'm using the arrow keys. And mm -hmm. It seems like it's great. Uh, oh yeah, you can roll it right to, right up to the camera. Oh yeah. Oh, slow down. <laughs> cool. That's great. Yeah. Wow, it's a very it's kind of a meditative speed right now. Nice. I'm, I'm, so yeah. you like the 1.37? You think we just stumbled across <laughs> the oh, perfect? Now I'm controlling it. <laughs> this is fun with two keyboards. I can control it. You know, we can even fight. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, maybe that's a later lesson as we'll like add multiple balls will be ball ball wars. Um, so yeah, obviously the biggest problem here is we're controlling the ball in 3D space, which is cool, but it's uh, it's actually running totally off screen. So I think the next thing to do is set up the camera to follow the balls. Movement. Okay, great, cool. So for this, we're actually going to create a component on the camera and call it camera controller. So uh, let's do it. Yeah. So on the main camera, uh -huh. we'll add a component here. Yep. And is it another new script? Yep. Okay, great. Camera controller. Mm-hmm. Cool. Can we do it in Ruby? No. Um, oh, <laughs> this is also an important note. Check out C Sharp. What's JavaScript? That's JavaScript, but you add spaces when you're calling functions. 
It's sort of like that. It's <laughs> JavaScript, but it's not JavaScript. It's another really? language with types and a different syntax, and it's not JavaScript, but Unity calls it JavaScript. Uh-huh. Um, the community has taken to calling it Unity Script, which I recommend you call it. And wow. um, it's like one of my biggest pet peeves until Unity renames it that their like pet language to Unity Script. I will um, That's be insane. rolling my yeah. eyes at them. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, use C Sharp. It's great. Uh, cool. So, so why don't we go edit that script? Okay. Oh, for some reason, yeah, I wish it was putting new scripts into scripts. Um, I wonder if maybe, I think there's another, another good thing to learn about Unity early on is they, um, they have like magic names. Like sometimes, uh, if a folder is named a certain way, it behaves a certain way. Okay. So it could actually be that if we named this script that it would have created that in the right place. Anyway, we'll see. Um, cool. So the, um, this only has one, uh, it has two variables that we need to set up, a public game object okay. called player. So this is a reference. Like that. Yep, that's right. So and game object is, the, is Unity's class that all objects that appear in physical space, uh, it basically inside the scene view, they all inherit from game object. Okay. So game objects have many components, you could say. Okay. You, components are mixed into them, but like the camera is a game object, the sphere, the plane, the okay. light. And so player would be the Q ball? The, yes. The, okay. Right. So you could call it Q too if you want to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Great. We're definitely, you know, we're not building a framework for a player controller now. We're definitely building something very specific to our game, yeah. which is good. Yeah. I think that's good. Um, so then, uh, oh, and then uh, set up one private variable called offset, and that's going to be a vector three. Do I need to call it private? Or is uh, it just going to be private? I believe that you do have to declare that. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't offset. think there's a default. Cool. So uh, in start, which once again is called whenever the player presses play, we're going to set uh, offset. Um, and... This is going to be uh, transform, which is the same as saying this transform. Okay. This is basically a convenience method that Unity sets up to get the uh, transform components values. So there's, there's a couple of things we learn here. First of all, um, that uh, this is in, can be inferred in C sharp, so you don't have to type this transform. Mm -hmm. You say transform, it will look on this, which is our own game object that we're a part of. Mm -hmm. Um, And then secondly, that that they've set up this this thing, which is the same as, remember before we did get component? Um, Yep. This is, it's a synonym for this, right? Get transform is just a component. Um, And so this, in this case, is actually the, um, it's actually the game object in other words, the camera, not the camera controller. Is that right? Actually, you know what? You're, you're, you're I'm wrong. This is the component. This is the cam- This is the camera controller. The, the, the beha- Yes, Wait, it's, the it's the mono. Yeah, it's, it's the behavior. The that, it's right. the component. I believe which is the yes. behavior in this case. Right. Okay. I believe. Yeah, and then um, it has these methods for for getting at the other components as well. Okay. Cool. Right. Okay. Um, oh, so, so transform is the transform component that we're accessing. Exactly on uh, the, on, on, the, the on our yeah our right. on the mounted behavior. Okay. Right. Got right. It. Exactly. And on anything that this camera controller is added to. So back over here, just to remember our like where we are in life we are on the camera game object right which is this little guy and we're uh, going to be programmatically right. transforming it exactly moving it right yeah. so i when i move it here you, we can see that the transform its values are updating and um, we also see in the camera preview i'm actually seeing the um you know the rel- relation to the ball change but so yeah and then we're on the camera control here i can just double click on this and it will open us back up to here um so what the offset is is it's my own position which is a vector three uh minus the player objects transform oops so we're setting we're going to set that up in a minute but okay. my transform uh position which is a vector three which is my xyz and q mean q dot q dot yes q thank you position okay, yeah cool. um yep. and so basically we're subtracting the we're, we're setting like, a, this is just setting my initial offset. Got it. Um, so, um, 
And the reason this is dynamic, like we could hard code this, but this enables us to set the way we like the starting con the, we, to set the starting conditions, sort of, right? Okay. So we're like, oh, I like the camera pretty close. So I'll move it pretty close to the game object and say like, you know, that's kind of actually, uh, you know, the game should be pretty up close and personal. And then when we start this code, it will dynamically set the offset based on the distance between me, the camera, and it, the cue ball. Okay, great. Um, cool. Which we'll use later. Yep, totally. And then uh, in update, we will uh, update this transform. So we take its, um, we're basically uh, saying, take my own transform uh, position, which is the X, Y, Z. This position is mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. opposed to rotation and scale. Yep. Uh, and reassign it to the cue balls transition transform. Ah, uh, sorry. Q. plus the offset, so the distance away. Okay. If I didn't set the offset, then this would just always put the, the camera on top of the cue ball, I which see. we don't want. Yep. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Let's, let's play. All right. Let's see what happens. Okay. Now let's try driving around. Okay, so we have a problem here where everything is white. <laughs> yeah. So we can't really tell the scale. So actually, that'll be a quick little side lesson. First of all, yeah, I don't. Do I think it. we should return these things both to uh, to zero. Okay. Put them on the. On yeah. The put them on the ground. Um, and then uh, yeah, this should be a pretty low angle. And then for the cue ball, this is the, we'll just quickly look at um, the. Uh, mesh renderer. So whereas this, the mesh is its geometry, the mesh renderer is what actually draws the geometry on okay. the screen. Um, and one of the things we can use here is materials, which is a whole system in Unity, but um, it's using the default material right now, which is just white. Um, let's choose, let's see what it looks like to use the skybox material. So this is what we're using Whoa. for the sky. So Trippy. yeah. Uh, that actually didn't work at all. <laughs> so trippy, but uh, we can also create a new material, but okay. let's just, um, let's choose a diffuse material. And then I think I should be able to like override some of its settings or actually it's, it's hard when I don't have, um, when this project is so empty, cause like we could create, you know, add, add a brick texture to uh -huh. it, but we kind of don't have a lot going on here. I, is there any way I can override this? Let's just see. I just want something that really stands out. Okay. This frame debugger render target display demo material. Oh, that's all. That just looks terrible. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. We do you want to just import want some, some assets really quick? Yeah, let's do that. We want some cool. color. All right. So, whoa. Oh, okay. There's one other uh, pro problem we've got here. So, we're getting an unassigned reference exception when we press play. Uh, this is actually because the uh, camera, sorry, the camera script, the camera controller, uh, doesn't have a reference to the cue ball. So we set it up as a uh, variable here. Yeah, of course. Now this is where, um, this is another so you interesting just have to link it up. thing. Yeah, and you link that just by dragging and dropping. Oh, so cool. I'm just dragging the cue ball and that dragging it in here. Yep. And it knows that it's supposed to be a game object. Great. Um, yeah. So if I hit save, now this is just configuration of the camera. And at, now I actually expect we may be able to tell that it's working anyway. So... Ugh, it's really subtle. You can't really tell. So um, I think it is working, but we just can't tell because it's white on white. Yep. So let's set a new material. Um, so I'm going to go to, I right click to want to create. I'm going to create a new material here. We'll call it Q material. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and so this is like a really interesting system to Unity. This is basically your first taste of what's called a shader, which is... Um, code that tells a GPU how to draw geometry and taking into account all the other things in the system, like what's casting light and what's casting a shadow and what's reflecting light, et cetera. Okay. Um, so, but the most basic stuff here without any textures I can do is I can change the albedo, which is basically the setting that means how do, how do I reflect light? And I can say that this is sort of red colored. Um, wow. Yeah. And now uh, I'm just going to drag this cue material onto the cue ball. Whoa. Yeah. Nice. And then there's also fun stuff here where you can be like, is it a shiny metal ball? Okay. 
Um, in which case, oh, oh yeah, look. look at that. Yeah, now it's reflecting the light. That's a marble. Yeah, right yeah. yeah that's. Do you like that? It's kind of marble. Feel free to play with the like settings. That. It's really um, I like smoothness that. and metallic. Well, I guess a, really I guess uh, a cue ball is a, a little a little metallic. I mean, you know, I'm kind yeah. of trying to move in the direction of like what <clears throat> what I would expect a cue ball to look like. Yeah. Um, Although it is white, maybe we can change the plane. Okay. Um, yeah, want to create a maybe create a plane well, we material. We can make one more material, yeah. and then um, so just right click in the assets. Yeah. So we'll create a material for the plane, and yep. then we can clear. This is kind of like our table. Oh yeah. Oh, we're just by nature. This is going to end up being a pool based game. I can tell. Yeah, I think so. Okay, pool shark. So then I just drag it here. Yeah. Okay. And then that's not going to change anything because so far default. it's default, right? But, but you I can, can change make it. it kind of like a. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at this. Oh yeah, you just use the dropper, which you can use anywhere in the interface too. Um, if you click on the thing itself, then you get the color oh, picker. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, it really depends on where this uh, where this pool table is. Is it um, like in some frat house somewhere, <laughs> like a University of Michigan logo on it? Or oh something? yeah, we can we can do that if we get sponsored by U of M yeah, for this game. Call us, you guys. Yeah. We'll, we can make a deal. Okay. Cool. So that's nice. Right. And, and I would then, say that this thing is actually really rough. Yeah. Um, oh, that's so it's nice. got a low that's smoothness to look and a little, little um, you yeah. can't get too hung up on metallic and smoothness. It's, it's not more the purely. Yeah. Yeah. I get um, that. And then the other thing we could add here eventually is we could add like a nice texture. Um, like a felt texture. Exactly. So that yeah. would go here. I don't think we have anything like nice like that, but so yeah, V2, yeah. we can add a nice felt. Sure. Cool. All right. That should make things a little bit clearer. All right. Mm. So oh, yeah, I can see it's rolling. It's now. rolling, but it's actually, I think the, we need to change the angle of the camera a little bit. So, um, okay. I'm just going to move the camera up and rotate it down. So I grabbed this handle up here. Okay. And then I'm going to grab, um, it's still rough without any sort of, Oh, you know what? I think the other problem is that it's just, um, we, the shadow is not visible from this angle, so that will help yeah. things a little bit. Um, I think it's really strange that the camera is this like 2D object. It's like this flat looking icon when, so when you move it around, like the camera looks like it's pointing away from the ball, but it's actually, um, <laughs> it's actually pointing at the ball. Uh, wait, sorry, say again? Oh, just like the, the camera is like this little icon and it's right. like, it looks like it's pointing away from the ball, but it's actually... Yeah, only when it's selected. So those icons yeah. are called gizmos and you can um, select here like kind of what they look like yeah. and what you want you can also when you're writing your own code add your own gizmos which is helpful oh, so like good. if we wanted to add like a cue ball gizmo then that yep. would appear in sort of the same thing um, all right let's see if that's a little bit clearer so okay it's still really <laughs> hard to tell okay yeah well, and our light source looks really weird now yeah like we're on the other we're, we're on the other so side luckily the, I should be able to on the I, dark side of the moon <laughs> yeah I think I can wind that back okay and then I'm gonna add one more thing for for reference which is I'm gonna add like a cube oh, good. Um, this could be considered our cue balls antagonist it could be it's sort of like dark shadow uh, you know it's like we're not so different you and I sort of thing uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, this could end up being the final boss we don't know there we nice. go so and we'll you notice that because we didn't add gravity yep. uh, or yep. sorry a rigid body to this thing it doesn't affect it but it does have a collider so you can see that the ball yeah. uh, is unable to pass through it and can we work on um is it easy to change the sort of bounciness of the ball like can we change it so that it bounces off of the that's a great question cube? i think rigid body physics um only factors in like velocity and angle okay um but there's definitely uh, notions of materials you could do uh, for that. I mean, I could okay. be wrong. I mean, you, the nice thing about Unity is like you, you can kind of tell often just by looking. Like, what do we have in uh, rigid body here? Like, we've yep. got mass, drag. Actually, I, I do think that by increasing the mass... Yeah, so we could definitely increase the mass of one object or another, and that would depend, like, does this thing bounce off of it or does it push it? I, I you like know? that. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> so we could play with that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, do we want a bunch more cubes on here? Like, I guess I'm now I'm thinking back to like what, what the point of the game is, you know, when we right. kind of like, what's our goal with this, um, with the cue ball, where are we going? And that's a great question. I mean, yeah, I feel like it's a good moment to step back as a game des designer. I mean, I could also see like a world where the, you know, the ball is like 
water falling down a bunch of different stacked cubes like marble mm-hmm, madness mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of places we could go with it but uh it's so i guess the question is like do we want to go into world building um yeah or do we want to finish i guess the, the one thing we're still missing is what is the ball's goal in yeah. life I think that would be great to define because then we can actually have something playable. We we yep. have a, we can get to playability. Totally. And then we can make it fun if we want to. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I hate fun. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think games should be fun. I, I just don't. I don't believe in it. Um, so, I guess. Well, you know, we could set up some more fun. We could set up some walls. Okay. Um, and then I could just give you a quick like intro to how like how one might group these things, which would teach you a little bit about like the hierarchy. Um, so yeah, so let's try, let's try doing that. So let's take our cube and say, this is like our prototype wall. Um, I think to make it feel a little bit more wally, I'm going to scale it along one vector and make it thin. Mm-hmm. And then I'm also going to make it a little bit longer. So let's just say this is the basic unit of wall in our game. Mm -hmm. Um, And so then there's a couple things I can do. So first I could just uh, duplicate this a bunch. Just I'm doing command D. Okay. And then, right. And then um, it's changing the rotation to 90. Right. No, not that one. This one. No, maybe it was right. See, this is where Y sort of throws me sometimes. Um, Totally. Yeah. Um, So, we create. We could create a little maze. I like this already. Yeah, yeah. the scale is nice too. Yeah. Um, and then one thing I might do here to help, like reason about this, is create an empty game object. So uh, the interesting thing about game objects is they're used for everything in the hierarchy, including what we might just think of as a folder. So um, ga- what uh, I just created this empty game object. I'm going to call it uh, walls. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. And then I can nest anything uh, inside of that. Okay. So, and then this is collapsible. And then a lot of things happen uh, that happen to the parent object are mirrored throughout them. So this okay. is one of the most important checkboxes. This just says whether it's active or not. Okay. An active game object is drawn. It is can be collided with. All of its script run. Yep. Script run. An inactive one is the opposite. It's almost like it doesn't exist. It exists That's in the great. hierarchy, but it doesn't exist, right? Yeah. So um, any anything you do here. The other thing that I can do is now, if I want to move my walls, I can either move objects individually within it, or I can move the whole walls object. And everything's tr- transform cool. is relative. Yeah, I like that. Um, this also I could also do something like slick like this yeah, because I'm a lazy it. developer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 I should have probably done that as a right right angle, so it would be like really nice, right? Let's Whoa, be obsessive. This is cool. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So we're like starting to set up our little maze here. Um. And what's nice is that these are all based on primitives, right? So we're not like setting up a lot of state. I don't know. Yeah. 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 And we could we could even dip duplicate these uh a bunch of times and like have a maze pretty quickly like yeah with totally a bunch of these um tetris shapes mm-hmm. um, there's also a whole pr- procedural geometry system so if you wanted to start oh wow encode creating these cubes you could okay do that. then we could have a yeah so the maze could be different every time or something. right right we wouldn't even mm-hmm. be able to solve it as the as the devs um so we'll just take a quick look at that now Sweet. Now our ball is like, and now I kind of wish I had an even higher angle, but mm-hmm. you know, we're bumping we can, into walls. We're, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Right. That's great. Um, oh, you know what this just made me think of is yeah. um, doing a, a thing where the controls change, uh, move the plane. Oh uh, yeah. So you have I one love of those that. Let's, you, can we do that? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Wow. Actually, do you know what's crazy about that is we could probably repurpose the Q ball course. controller. The player, the, yeah. yeah, the player controller. Yeah, now we wish we call it the player controller because, uh, you know, uh-huh. but, uh, but it doesn't matter. So we could either, how do you want to do it? Do you want to create a new script called plane controller or, or do you want to modify uh, I think player we should controller? modify player controller and just detach it from the ball and attach it to the, to the to totally. plane. Totally, yeah. totally. Um, actually, so the, I, it is fun. The one thought I just had is if we leave player controller intact, then we can, then it could be a two-player game where you control the ball and I control oh, the plane. Okay, okay, let's try that. Oh wait, is that gonna work? 
Yeah, it could work. Let's try. Let's let's try it. I, I okay. think, and I think if nothing else, also because we're moving the plane, we're actually going to be, we're not going to be moving the plane the same way. We're going to move the ball, right? Right. So right, this is more of a, its, axis. it's more of a plane yeah. player controller than a ball player control- yeah. controller. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So um, but we can start from this as our as our. Uh, yeah, I agree. So yeah. I'll just control D this. Cool. I'll just duplicate it. Uh, shouldn't I be able? To, I think I, I think I just copy and paste it. Can I do that? Like you I mean, re- I can, you can reveal and find her and then... Yeah, that's true. Is it? Okay, there we go. And we'll call this one plane controller. Great. And um, It's this, sort of plane player controller, isn't it? I guess, yeah. I mean, now I'm thinking <laughs> that this would have been better called Q controller. So actually, just so we know, yeah. like, this is all it takes to... Um, Re- oh wait actually i think i want to rename it inside you know, uh-huh, yeah uh-huh. so unity keeps all of these like dot asset files totally. yeah so anyway um where's where do you go? okay um cool yeah we'll just rename this really quick um uh and then we'll it will actually be pissed if it doesn't have the same uh name here okay so this does matter Burp. Oops. All right. But then in theory, it's preserved all of the references. So in theory, this should still have a Q controller. Yeah, cool. it does. And then we can detach that because we're, we're going to need the uh, the commands, the uh, the movement commands on the plane, right? So right. We'll probably, at least for now. We'll need to use, I would use mouse access for the plane maybe. Is that okay. what you're talking about? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, nice. Oh, okay. So I can't find it. Is it because I renamed it? Let's just see. Um, so let's just, let me try to dragging this into Unity. You can't find it? Okay, no, you found it. Okay, so this is the plane controller. I'm gonna add it to the plane. What's the problem? Oh, I didn't rename it yet. The, the class yeah, itself, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's my problem. This game's gonna be so sweet. It's gonna be sick. Cool. So yeah, what do you think we need to change here? Uh, so instead of um, so so we're getting the plane for one for one thing because that's right. the thing we're gonna be changing. Mm-hmm. Um, is it just get component plane? It's um, this is so we're what we're trying to do is move the plane instead of moving the ball, right? Right. Oh, um, and oh, and we need to actually assign. And just so the, I think we can just use rigid body here, although in, if we want it to have that kind of physics feel uh-huh. so that, uh, it's, you know, it could also be that we just literally update its, um, pos- its rotation. So the, the, you know, like the ball, because the ball we're choosing to move through physics. So instead of just like telling it where to go, we're actually like pushing it in various directions and that's why it has that feel of yeah. like you, you know it starts rolling then it goes faster um so, and this is going to be more we're not adding a force well i guess well we, so this is the question do we want yeah. to add a force where we're essentially pushing the plane i, I think we'd have to, we have to think of it kind of in a physics based way if we use force where right. we it kind of has like some sort of a center hinge point mm-hmm. and then we push it on either side i think a simpler way might just be to literally change its rotation along like a mouse axis. Okay, yeah. so in mm-hmm. that case, we don't need its rigid body at all because we're just using its transforms rotation oh, nice. aspect. Yeah, yep. um, and I don't think we need speed either. Um, so let's go back to mouse X, mouse Y. Okay. Uh, and then we've got these two, uh, we've got a movement vector, but I don't actually think that this is, this is the hack. This is the crazy hack. Um, this is me like cheating yeah, essentially. Let's go. So rather than adding force, I'm just gonna leave this here just in case yep. we're curious about doing it like physics, cause this might be a horrible idea. Um, we'll just take our own transform. So this is the plane, plane yep. transform. Yep. And then rather than before we were taking its position, we're gonna take its rotation. And we're just going to modify directly. Yeah. I love it. So this is, I believe, also a vector three. So we'll make a new uh, vector three. And this is, 
there's that space again. Uh, this is going to be uh, move horizontal. Oops. Uh, move horizontal. Why are you not completing for me? Am I doing something wrong? No, you've got the... Oh, okay, I'm just surprised it. it doesn't see these like local variables. Oh, mm, that's weird. I, maybe it's... I don't know why. These should still work as local VARs. Yeah, it so. looks like it. We'll see. Um, so we'll take the mouse's X for... And let's just remind, let me just remind myself of how this is actually going to look. So yeah. we're, we're changing this. So if we do this... It's oh, that. okay. So it's that. Yep. And if oh, we and we this, need the walls to stick to it. It's that which we don't want. Right. Oh, that's a good point. So do can you guess how we do that? It's actually super do simple. We, well, do we put the... Well, you had these controllers together. Do we just put the plane inside one with all the other stuff? We put them inside the plane. So basically, oh, yeah. If we, nice. if, yeah. If we parent these to that, then oh, any sweet. transforms we do to of course. this... Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Oh, I love this. Um, so, okay, okay, so it's actually the X and the Z, right? So X and Z are what we want to change, and cool. Y just stays Z. Yeah. Because that would be really Totes. disorienting. Yeah. So this will be 0.0F. See, I like this programming by sort of inspection as you go. Yeah. It's, and it's more fun here than than it is a lot of time if you're doing like a web app. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's this got a pretty more fast uh, cycle, right? Yeah, to and, actually see yeah. it. And yeah, it's great to be able to like mess with the variables directly. Exactly. Like that's amazing. Like while you're, um, so yeah. I think this might just work. Let's see, Let's do you, want, you control the ball, I'll control the plane. Okay, okay so I'm using um, You should be doing the arrow, the arrow keys, keys okay. right? Great. Uh, oh, we messed up something. Uh, oh, this uh, wants a quaternion, not a vector three. So okay. that's here. So rotation is actually a quaternion. Let's do that. What's a quaternion? Uh, it is a root. It's like a rotation uh, type value. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, there's a whole branch of mathematics that I'm is about sure there these. Is. <laughs> I don't know it. <laughs> okay. So I'm totally just using type safety to determine this. Like, let's see what it actually takes. Um, what do you take, friend? <laughs> um, sometimes there's like a no there's like a there's a way to jump to the docks but um, I might just have to I might just have to google it I mean I'm trying to yeah it's in Visual Studio it definitely tells you the types as you're going uh huh okay let's just look it up really quick yeah let's do it alright uh, this, is, this is how real programmers yeah program that's oh, true. I've got it over here on the other screen. Cool. Let me move it over. Oops. Where am I? Oh, I can kind of see it. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. It's going this way. Okay, I got it. Great. Okay. Uh, Unity Quaternion. Uh, they're not easy to understand intuitively. Oh, how great. Um... <laughs> So, uh, I see. So they're saying take rotations and use them Slayer. to construct new rotations. Oh, okay, that makes some sense. Um, okay, interesting. So maybe it's just going to be quaternion dot angle. I'm trying to think about how we could, like easily set this from oh well the mouse yeah and it looks like there's Access. variables can we just modify directly the x and the um uh the yes thing? because you know quaternions inside and out right uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> i mean it could be interesting i'm not gonna lie but I, when it's but i think it's it's true when they say use the existing one so let's okay. like i think then instead of saying like take a new one let's uh take the existing one and modify it. Um, uh, and let's see. I see. Set from two rotation yeah, or something like that. Yeah, let's specify forward and upward. Okay, so this lets you set forward and upward directions. Um, the set. This sets an axis, which is kind of interesting. So we could possibly create a vector three from Whoa. the inputs. Okay. And try that. Let's look at this documentation really quick. And then the look rotation is another option, which takes a vector three. With the specified. Yeah, With I guess forward and what upward forward and upward direction. means. Yeah, let's look at both of these and see which is more promising. Um, so 
two okay go away um two angle axis converts the rotation to angle axis representation oh okay this actually just seems like it's just uh type, sort of a typecast so i don't think I that's what okay. we want yep. um but this, yeah, I think you might be right. This might be it. Creates rotation with the specified forward and upwards directions. The So this is a uh, direction, which means probably a vector. And then, or I don't actually know what. Yeah, okay. They're it's both vectors, direction, okay. And then that defines in which direction up is. Oh, but you can, there's a default. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, I see. So this is like a constant on the vector three class, which probably means what you okay. and I consider up, which is like yep. Y. Towards the sky. Yeah, exactly. Um but isn't it nice that they don't assume? Yeah. You know, like you up can know. be anywhere. Yeah. yeah it might be on a space station. In the best games, yeah. up is really down. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> um, you know, like V, 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 uh, that game. So uh, the Z axis will be aligned with four and the Y axis upwards. I mean, we could just, uh, we could just try it and see how it, see how it plays out. Great. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. So then we will take this vector. Um, Let's just try that. Mm -hmm. And oh no, I'm just going to keep that at zero um, rather than uh, guess. Um, so we're taking these coordinates and then we're going to pass that as the first arg. And we think that the second arg will just be the default up. Uh, no clear idea what this will do, but my, my hope is that we are, a, yeah, we're basically modifying the existing rotation with a slight right. vector change. And we could um, we could potentially take this float and make it a public thing that we could tweak if totally. we wanted to see. Oh yeah, to see if that's the, the problem. The why yeah. does something for us or not? Yeah. Do you want to do that or should we just go with it? Let's just try it okay, for cool. that one, and we can cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, no. Oh, actually, it's saying that it needs two arguments. Um, I thought that we were just looking at docs that said... Set look you, rotation. Yeah, you've got the wrong um, method name here. Oh, sorry. So yeah, oh, right. I was still using the old one. Thank you. You're using a uh, 2 Yeah, the one yeah. I thought it was going to be. There we cool. go. Uh, void to unity. Oh, okay. And so now we're actually going to, ra uh, rather than assigning it, we're just calling, we're just calling a, it. I see. Method. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. Okay. Uh, we're getting look rotation viewing vector is zero. That is an error. Playing controller eight. So. So maybe we do need that Y. This. Yeah. Uh huh. And I like your idea now in case this is going to be the problem. So let's call it um, uh, float set quaternion. Y value because wow. we don't we don't know right I mean what else but this is the best way to learn quaternion math is to yeah make a fun game how long do we have till four yeah I think okay t t eleven more minutes okay <laughs> eleven minutes to learn quaternion to learn, math yeah. boom let's let's, yeah. let's hope that one of those Stanford free courses uh, exists uh, and I need to declare it public I think and does it matter the order whether it's public float or float public. You know what it does? It's a public float. Cool. Um, All right. And then we're using that there. All right. And then we'll set that in our game object. So this should update. And now we have this. Field. Nice. Um, and it's also worth noting that you can you can actually declare a lot of different um, properties to build up these panes. So I love that the interface for the developer is kind of coded into the system. Yeah. So there's a lot of, basically there's annotations you can do for variables too. That's great. Like, yeah, you can set constraints on the range, et cetera. Okay, um, let's see, we have no idea what we're doing. Okay, so nothing's happening, no errors, but nothing's happening to the plane in any uh, noticeable fashion when I move the X and Y. So uh, it could be that this value is way too low, but now I'm really grasping at straws. Um, yeah. Wow, I would, I'm surprised, because I would expect to see it be like really wild. Right. Movement, if I mean, means. maybe, I think it may also be that we just don't understand set look <laughs> rotation yet. Yeah. Like I want to yeah. see an example of how it's used. Yep. I mean, it also says it creates a rotation the result is a plane. But yeah, I guess I'm not 100% so, sure. Yeah, because, so is anything changing? If we Can we actually look at the plane while we're running the game and see if... 
I mean, I guess I we, mean, we should we see it. Um, it, it. It's staying zero, basically. Right. I can also, I mean, just to make 100% sure we could move the camera further away. Um, but I, I really think we'd massively be seeing yeah. um, the difference. Oh, I like this yeah. angle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. So maybe, um, maybe actually, maybe it's up that we want to change. In the case of this plane, is it possible that just I, changing up would be? It could. It could be. be all I'm, we need to do? I'm also. Sus I kind of suspect that we are creating a quaternion and actually throwing it away. Um, uh -huh. I think it might actually be like that. We were supposed to assign. Um, okay. Things because it says. Um, if used to orient a transform, so that I don't know. That implies to me that like right. We w and right. uh, their code examples got them setting. Right. Yeah. So we could call this like okay. Quaternion. Let's just. Um, I do love using types just to sort of like know what's. It helps me remember what I'm doing. I'm like I don't yeah, even know totally. what a quaternion really is yet, but I know that this is one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll call that a uh, look rotation. Whoops. I keep using, because I'm a Windows developer, half the time I use control instead of command sometimes. Okay. Um, so, and let's just try, I think we got an error before, but maybe we should look into that more. If we set our own transform, transform rotation uh, equal to this quaternion. Right. And should we be using set look rotation or... Um, just look rotation. Because I see them I see them setting it using a look rotation. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. Do we still have the other one? This is, creates a rotation with specified forward and upwards. And this is creates a rotation with the specified forward and upwards. I don't understand really <laughs> nice what's different. Documentation. Um, I mean, yeah. the one thing I like about this one is it shows an example of them doing yeah, what we're doing. I like that too. So it's, um, well, you know what, just so we learn, let's do it both ways. Let's okay. just run this and see if anything happens. My prediction okay. is that, uh, be, it, oh. yeah, we got an error. Okay. So I think this, I, don't, I think maybe that this set isn't, is, it's is, returning is, void. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And should that be uppercase or lowercase L? It should be uppercase, I think. This is also un, uh, inconsistent. Rotation. Okay. Um, yeah, but it's C sharp also has this convention where most methods are uppercase. Okay. Uh, so unlike everything we've done before. Okay. Cannot be accessed with an instance reference. Qualify it with a type name instead. Static member. Look rotation cannot be. Oh, I think this might not be a. I think this might be a, a static method. Um, yeah, so it's called from the quaternion class, not an instance of quaternion. So what they're doing here is getting a vector three of sort of the target of where you want to go. Uh, and this is our own position. So they're finding the distance in 3D space between where wow. we want to go and where we are. Oh, okay. Then that's rote. Okay, so my- It's giving us back a rotation based on yeah. two positions. Right, I'm guessing that this, is you, this example okay. is used to orient an object towards the direction it's going. Right. So I'm like, imagine a player that you told to go right, yep. but he's still looking straight. This would help you turn the player right while he's I going see. right. Mm -hmm. um, so it's similar, but yeah, we're like, maybe we, maybe I we, feel like we're in a rabbit hole. Yeah. Maybe we need to step back and yeah. think about, we want to do something really simple. It should be really simple. If only I knew this quaternion math, which yeah. is, I want to translate the Y rotation coordinate yeah. Yeah. which is why I'm, I'm kind of surprised maybe we just got scared off from the straightforward way of like uh -huh, uh -huh. why shouldn't i just be able to um set this variable and like it should yeah happen. i mean the, the 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 developer in me wants to um ignore the documentation and just <laughs> set x and z or whatever <laughs> okay would you want to try just we'll, we'll try one more time to see if we can hack into that yeah. and we can always delete this like if that. it's you can edit it out <laughs> okay um so far no editing just great um okay so uh Let's say, so is it going to let me grab this? It basically, it was like, don't change my values unless I you know what's going on. I think it was like rotation.x and right. rotation.z. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
don't modify this directly. Yeah, I okay. Like it. I like gonna it. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, so we could grab the vector. Um, this is going to be a disaster. I, I just can feel it. Um, oh, this is going to be a huge disaster. That's great. Um, and then we're not going to do that at all. Um, oh, what we are going to do is set... We could even potentially use move horizontal and move vertical, although that would be even wilder. <clears throat> I mean, we are ultimately, right? Because we're, yeah, we're oh, yeah, using we these yeah, to yeah, create the actually, movement thing. Exactly yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. Okay, this let's is see. Really strange. I have no idea what's going on. This is great. Now you can see how people learn game development exactly. by just fucking around. Okay, so, um, oh, it doesn't like this. Um, it's quaternion dot look rotation. And then it's like set. Wait, we don't even need yeah, to be doing this anymore. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And wait, are we, uh, oh yeah, great. Perfect. Yep. Cool. I think that's Although right. we don't have look rotation, uh, defined as a. As oh, a it was that. I think it's yeah. just transform dot rotation dot. If they'll let us do that. Yeah, we can try that. Um, yeah, we can just see if that works. Sorry. Wait, dot x. Yeah, it's just dot x equals. I have a feeling this won't work, but let's just see. Oh, well, i got to fix this syntax first. Yeah, you can't just uh, modify it, but you can oh, okay. do what we were going to do, which is okay, set up a quaternion and assign it. Got it. So we just need to assign this. Let me wind that back. So we're just making a quaternion right. object in this. Um. Wow. I think. So we're creating this look rotation. I would just, let's just grab our own. Since we're ha hacking it directly, we're going to grab our own rotation, which is a quaternion. Then we're hacking it uh, directly from movement, which is a vector based on the mouse and X and Y movement. Mm -hmm. And then we're just, swapping the quaternions cool let's see i think oh i don't think it recompiled yet oh shit oh wow yes yes we don't know quaternion math move oh, the ball this is amazing move the ball this is amazing okay so now i'm gonna whoa so yeah there's a lot of jitter it's also, you know what's funny is it's resetting. It's it's actually resetting back to the mouse axis. So, so when you don't move it. the mouse. Oh, I managed to uh, jitter the ball right through. That's right great. In, right in a space. So, so when you don't move the mouse, it's uh, going back to zero. There's our plane. Is that right? Um, so, yes, it is. Okay. Right, which we can probably learn something from. That is cool. Um, and when we restart the game, it's just going to start us back over again. Right. I think what we want, actually, so here's what I would do next. I think what we want... Yeah, when we restart here, it's going to set us back again. So we can do this and then start sort of jittering. I think what we could do if we wanted to persist this change is rather than just grabbing the X and Y values of the mouse, what we should be doing is grabbing the relative speed of the mouse in the given direction mm -hmm. and then using that to update the current quaternion so the, I, I think the problem is we're just getting like zero zero yeah. you know like yeah. based on the position on each update um, and then when you when you rotate it it's falling through because the ball is actually you're rotating it so the ball is on the underside of the plane yep exactly i That's think amazing. that we're, we're uh, it's jumping so far yep. in its angle that yep. half of the ball is on the other yep. side and so then at that it's at that point that there it's we gone. did it again yep yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. And this is the sort of like problem that game developers run into all the time, actually, because you really do let people f mess with these physics the and yeah. like these player controllers, which are just mesh colliders running through the world. And if you manage to run through at a given speed in a, in a weird angle, suddenly you're outside of the level and you're in doom and you're like running around, um, which is kind of cool. I love that. Yeah. I feel like that can be the basis of a game right there. Like if we were to just keep playing with this, you know, and we got to we got to close out today, but like if we were to keep playing with this, I'm sure we would get somewhere in terms of like, you know, potentially some novel way of playing, right. playing this game just by, based on, you know, messing around in 
um, in unity with some of the stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we're, I, you know, what's funny is I think we're really close to, I know we're out, we're over time, but I think we're really close to actually doing the, um, getting a, like a two player version of that, like the plane move thing, the going. plane. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. The, the main problem we've got is just on every update, the, the rotation, the quaternion is getting set back to zero, zero, zero. Yep. So if we just persisted that and made this a, like a difference, then we'd be set. Wow. Maybe next time. Yeah. Thank you so much, Patrick. Yeah. Thanks really for fun. having me. This was, this was super fun. All right. Thanks y'all. <laughs>